If you've got white spots on an LG TV or any other LED TV, then that's because the reflectors covering the LEDs and the LED backlight have fallen off. And that generates hot spots of white light on your screen. So the basic architecture of LED TVs is that you have LED strips connected in series behind the panel of your TV. Each LED then has a plastic reflector glued on over the top and this spreads the light out so that you get even illumination behind the screen. When the glue holding the reflectors fails, then the reflectors will just fall off into the bottom of your TV's case and you'll get a hot spot of white light where the LED is because the LED's light is no longer being spread out. So a quick way just to double check that the white spots are caused by reflector failure is just to give your TV a quick shake and you should hear the reflectors moving about in the bottom of the case. It's an easy job just to fix this but you will need to disassemble your TV to get at the backlights because they're right behind the screen and underneath all the boards so you have to completely take your TV apart. This will probably take you half an hour or so to do but as long as you've got some heat stable super glue or epoxy then you can easily just glue the reflectors back on over the LEDs and you won't have the white spot problem anymore. So to start, just make sure you've drained all power from your TV because you don't want to get an electric shock when you open it up. So unplug it, hold down the power button for 10 seconds or so, and then wait for about 30 minutes just to make sure all power has fully drained from the capacitors within, within your TV. Then you can put your TV face down on a soft surface and unscrew all of the screws holding the back panel in place and remove that. Once you've got the case open, you'll need to remove all of the tape and connectors and any extruded steel pieces covering the boards. You'll probably need to remove most or all of the boards inside your TV, but it depends where the screws are and, where, and whether they're holding them in such a way as to prevent you opening up the, the screen itself. You'll find that the screen is held within a separate metal case and you'll have the boards controlling your TV on the back of this case and the panel will be on the front and then the backlights are in between them. So you'll likely have to remove all of the boards from the back panel of your TV but it depends on the position of the screws and whether any of the screws are also holding the case together. You should try and keep as much of it in one piece as you can if you can just take off a whole section without having to separate the boards from the steel panels holding it in place. Then don't take out any more screws than you need to. And it's also a good idea just to mark down where each screws come from. So you you might want to put all similar screws into a pile or into a plastic bag and have a, a marker pen handy so you know where each screw gets put back in again because you don't want to have any leftover screws when you put your TV back together. Most cables should come out just by squeezing the little plastic clip next to them. The T-Con cables have a little catch that you'll have to flick up or flick down depending on the model to release the cables. And once you've got all the cables removed. Then you can have a look at the case itself holding the, the panel on top of the backlights. So there'll likely be a couple of screws but then there'll be quite a few clips holding the case together and you'll need to jimmy these clips with a, a flathead screwdriver or similar. A lot of them can be very stiff so it's helpful to have a couple of screwdrivers just to hold one open once you get it open while you work on the next one. Once you've got all these clips open, then you'll have access to the panel itself. The panel is very thin and easy to crack. So just make sure you lift it carefully and you spread the weight 
and you place it on a soft surface away from everything else. The larger your panel is, the more danger you have of cracking it. And if you do crack the panel, then it's not fixable and will have to be replaced. But as the cost of a replacement panel is about the same as a new TV, then you're probably looking at a new TV in that case, unless you can find a replacement panel off eBay. Once you remove the panel and all the reflector sheets underneath, then you'll have access to the backlights. And then you can simply remove all of the fallen reflectors from the, the bottom of the case and then glue them on over the LEDs where they've fallen off. So most reflectors will just have three points of contact with the LED strip. So just put a little dab of glue on each of these three points and then press it down over the LED. Wait for it to dry and just check that it's solid and secure. It's a good idea just to check all of the remaining reflectors that haven't fallen off and just give them a little tug and see if they will come off easily or whether they're still secure. Because if you've got a few reflectors have fallen off, then it's likely that some of the other reflectors are going to fall off over the coming weeks. And you only want to do this once if, if, you, if possible. Once you've got the reflectors glued back in place, then you just have to work backwards, put your TV back together again, and you should no longer have any white spots on the screen. And there's a linked article below which has got some more fixes and some more details on this process.